All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to answer the burning question, can you define the derivative of the Dirac delta? And in fact, you can. So first of all, let me remind you what the Dirac delta is. Intuitively, it's this functional or this function under quotation mark that is infinity at zero and zero everywhere else, but with the property that if you take the integral of the Dirac delta from minus infinity to infinity, then you get one. So it's this unit mass, again, has mass one, but which spikes at zero. But mathematically, the way you define it as, is as follows. So the Dirac delta is this distribution or this functional delta, which takes smooth functions with compact support as an input, so Dirac delta applied to phi, and spits out the value of this function at zero. Which makes sense, because the Dirac delta, it concentrates function at the origin, just like this infinite spike. And now the question is, what is the, Dirac, the derivative of the Dirac delta if it exists? And for this, we need to define the derivative of a distribution. So, and it turns out the thing that helps us is integration by parts. So suppose you have two functions f and g, which are zero at the endpoints. Then what does integration by parts say? It says that the integral of f prime times g equals fg, but which is zero at the endpoints, minus fg prime. So integral of fg prime. And it turns out that's precisely how you can define the derivative f prime of a distribution. Namely, it's simply as follows. So the derivative f prime of the distribution is just, again, the functional that takes functions phi or g as an input and spits out minus f applied to g prime. And you see, this makes sense even if f isn't differentiable in the classical sense, because remember, g is infinitely differentiable. So it makes sense to apply g prime, which is still infinitely differentiable, and then apply f to that. So this is how you can define the derivative of a distribution. And let's apply that by, by finding the derivative of the Dirac delta, and you get something which, in my opinion, is pretty surprising. So what is delta prime applied to phi? Well, what it is, it's minus, and you transfer the derivatives. So minus delta applied to phi prime, which gives you, remember what the Dirac delta does? It evaluates functions at zero, so it gives minus phi prime at zero. So this is the derivative, this is delta prime. It's just the distribution which takes functions as an input and spits out minus the derivative at zero. So it concentrates functions at zero, but with this minus derivative. And it would be interesting if there's a physical significance for that, but I do not care. Um, well, and the cool thing is, <laughs> You know, if you've done it once, you can do it again. So what is now the second derivative of the Dirac delta? Well, by definition, it becomes minus. You again transfer one derivative here. So it's minus phi prime applied to, uh, minus delta prime, prime applied to phi prime. And well, what did we find? Delta prime just evaluates minus the derivative at zero. So it's minus uh, phi prime. So um, a minus, minus phi prime prime at zero, and that becomes phi double prime at zero. 
So it spits out, it takes a function as an input and spits out the acceleration at zero. And in fact, you can see by this you know, flipping sign and derivatives thing that you can just define the derivative of um, the Dirac delta. So the higher order derivative simply as follows. The nth derivative of the Dirac delta applied to phi is just, I believe, minus 1 to the n of the nth derivative of phi applied to 0. So in fact, even though the Dirac delta is not a function, it is in fact infinitely differentiable. And the thing is, the fun doesn't stop here because it turns out you can not only define the derivative of the Dirac delta, but also the Fourier transform, simply as follows. Because there's this wonderful thing called the Plancherel formula, which simply says the following. If you take the Fourier transform of f and multiply it by g and integrate, this is the same thing as f times the Fourier transform of g. Uh, possibly with some constant, but let's just normalize it so that the constant is 1. And this allows us to define the Fourier transform of a distribution, namely, the Fourier transform of f, where f is a distribution, it just takes functions g as an input and spits out the original distribution but applied to the Fourier transform of g. And uh, we'll define g such that g hat exists. So this is what's called a Schwarz space, which not to be confused with the German Schwarz, but uh, so functions g shows that this uh, Fourier transform is defined, and we can apply this to the Dirac delta. So delta hat applied to functions phi is just phi applied to the Fourier transform of phi. And remember what the Dirac delta does. It just uh, evaluates functions at 0, so this becomes the Fourier transform of phi applied to zero, which again makes sense. It just takes this function and evaluates it at zero, but in the Fourier transform sense. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.